Consumer confidence is up. Inventory has increased and prices are on the rise. Yes, it's a great market. We are here. It's nice to see this. Year after year, numbers are going up. And uh, my my co-host, my partner over here, Daniel Giroux, and I just had an awesome conversation. I'm excited. Happy to be here. This is the Roundtable Real Estate Simplified. We're here every Sunday at 10 a.m. And you know we're part of the Real Estate Radio Network. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, we've got over 200 shows in all the major marketplaces. They contact top uh, agents, top mortgage professionals in each uh, major market, and they ask them, to represent that market with the timely balanced truths of real estate. So we're here. I want you to stay tuned with us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for all the best advice. And uh, like I said, the timely balanced truths. One of the things that I want to get into right away is the top seven ways buyers lose. So we all know we all know somebody that's out there buying a house right now in this market. Um, it's a seller's market. So everybody's selling, everybody's buying. There's a ton of activity. And uh, I just want to go through these seven quick tips. And if you want to see this blog um, in more detail, you can check it out on the roundtableradio.com. You're going to be able to see, um, we're going to have a video up of this as well in this segment and also the blog. So just check out the roundtableradio.com. So I'm going to do a countdown style with this, Dan. And uh, this one right here is mistake number seven. Okay, so we're going to seven to one. Mistake number seven, waiving a home inspection. So home inspections are to protect buyers. Basically, obviously, you want to make sure that the roof is good, that the structure, you know, all around is, is, is good foundation, uh, you know, walls, no holes, no cracks, no 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 pests in, intruding into the house, no leaky pipes, you know, that the furnace runs, that there's no mold, that there's no radon, no lead. There's a million things that could go wrong in a house, and that's why you want a reputable home inspector to come in and to give you a report. And you know what? If you don't take advantage of this right as a buyer and you waive that, there's a possibility that something could be wrong with the house later on down the, down the road, which could end up costing you thousands upon thousands of dollars. So let's nip it in the bud right now. You know, so if there is something wrong with the house, you can ask the seller for a concession, meaning, you know, a credit off the price of the house, or you can ask them to take care of it. And if they don't, you're allowed to get out of the contract again within the first, normally within the first 10 business days of that contract. Mistake number six, buying a home with a cesspool and no seller concessions. Okay. Get this, starting January 1st, I know we spoke about this, but starting January 1st, 2016, any home in Rhode Island, and there's roughly 25,000 of them, any home in Rhode Island that has a cesspool is going to be either required to hook up to sewer if available, or you're going to have to hook up to a septic system. Um, you're going to have to have that installed. So now either the seller can pay for that, and sellers listen up too, because this is good advice for you, or or the buyer can pull an assessment. And I believe there's about 14 towns right now in Rhode Island that are giving, uh, you know, very low interest loans to uh, buyers that are taking this on. It might be 15 years, 20 years, whatever they do. Every town's different. Okay. And you can, um, you can call your local town or you can call, you know, your agent and have them check on it for you. If you want us to do that, obviously we will as well. Um, three, five, nine, two, three, three, eight. But, um, so yeah, so you want to make sure because a septic system to install is 13,500 to 35,000. That's the range that I've seen. And keep this in mind, the higher the water table where that location is, the higher the cost of the install. All right. So if you want more details, check out the blog and the roundtableradio.com. Also, mistake number five, making large purchases when buying a home. I know this one frustrates Dan and every other mortgage broker and banker out there. Furniture and cars are the two biggest culprits that we see. And when it comes to, uh, to this category, it's always furniture and cars, right, Dan? Those are the, the, the two biggies. If you go shopping, you will buy. That's yes. what I tell all my yes. clients. Yes, wait. Yeah, they're two days before they're closing, and they say, no, I'm just going to go to Cardi's and look. And I say, oh, if you oh, look, no. you're going to find. And mm -hmm. if you find, you're going to buy. And they always do. Um, where it really messes people up, to be honest with you, it isn't so much the cost, because people go, oh, I can afford it. Yeah. Well, that's fine. The problem is the inquiry. So there's a credit inquiry That's on your true, credit too. report. They yes. have to run a refresh to see if you've acquired any new debts. Yes. Then they say, have you acquired a debt? Yes, I acquired a new debt at Cardi's. Then they say, great, send us the statement. And they go, well, I, I just took out the credit card. You know, I charged $2,000 on that card, but uh, 
you know, I don't know what the payment's going to be yet. I haven't gotten the statement. And the bank says, yeah, neither do we. Yeah. So get us the statement. That's oh. where it becomes a problem because now you're being asked for something that's very difficult to get. I mean, you might have that original paperwork, but the average person goes in, they apply for this credit card. They go, okay, I'm great. I got my... Th- but they're not going to get a statement for like 35 days. It throws the whole debt to income ratio too. In a payment of 50, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. In a payment of $50, as low as $50 could throw you off from being able to buy that home mm-hmm. that you want in that neighborhood yep. that you want. We have a client right now. We said you have to find homeowner's insurance for $1,043. Call Barton that's Insurance. What that's what it's going to be, 1043 yeah. He came back and said, well, my agent said I could get it at 1060 so that should work, right? And we went... No. Oh, at a thousand forty three and fifty cents it doesn't work. So That's sometimes highest, yeah. if you're that tight, which I never advise a buyer to be at the exact extreme amount that they can be for debt to income ratio. But finish on with this list. I'm thank sure you. we'll have a lot more. Thank, to talk thank about. you, sir. No, we do. We do. Thank you for the input, Dan. Appreciate that. Mistake number four, acting too fast or waiting too long. So buying especially for first time home buyers, buying your first home. Um, and, and buying the first home that you see is not always a good idea. Make sure you're shopping around online. Make sure that you have a real estate agent that's uh, you know giving you details of the location. And it's all about future location. What is going to happen in this area in the years to come? The average American sells every five to seven years. Make sure that you're set up in a community or in a place that, that's going to have uh, growing home prices uh, over the years. And no, nobody has a crystal ball, but you know, if... Uh, if they're going to be, you know, putting up a huge parking lot in your backyard where there there was woods, um, you know, that might affect your, your home value. You know, who knows? Uh, there's a million different things that could happen. So make sure, you know, you have a realtor that's telling you about that location and make sure you just don't jump right into something without knowing all the facts about the area. And if you wait too long, you know, if you're out there looking at 40, 50 houses, you're missing opportunities, okay? Um, if you're looking for that perfect opportunity, there's no such thing. Um, I hate to say it, but you know, if you see a good deal, if your realtor tells you it's priced well, you know the location's great right now. It should be a few, g- great future location. It should hold its value. I think you're going to do fine here, as long as that real estate agent did the research for you and it feels right. That might that might be your house. You know, don't don't pass it up. Um, also, number three. Asking for things after the handshake. So what does that mean? Nothing ever hurts a deal more than making a deal with sellers and, you know, that the seller's agents presenting the offer with, you know, everything that you asked for, including maybe personal property, you wanted the snowblower, this, that, whatever else. And then the sellers say, okay. And then, you know, right before uh, that, that agreement is fully executed, you go back and you say, Oh, well, you know what? Why don't you throw the riding lawnmower on there and knock $5,000 off the price? That is not an ethical way of negotiating. Um, I've had I've had people ask me to do that before, and I've, I've told them that, you know, that that's not great. It, it definitely uh, insults sellers um, because nobody likes to go back on their word. Um, so that that's definitely something not to do. There are two times in the transaction when you can go back and ask for concessions or you can ask for a credit. And uh, these times are the home inspection. So if there's something wrong with the house, you can ask them to uh, either repair it or you can ask for a credit lowering the price. Um, and also if the home doesn't appraise, you can take it down. So make sure you know how to play the game how to by the rules. Okay. Mistake number two, choosing your lender based on the fact they house your checking account. Look, okay, there are a couple banks that I've done business with that did a phenomenal job, okay? I'm not going to plug them here um, because they're not on the show, but, but they did a good job. But I want you to consider something. There's nothing worse than putting a pre-approval letter, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, than putting a purchase and sales agreement through on a Tuesday at 5 o'clock and nobody at the bank there to take your call to give you a pre-approval letter. Okay, so that's not in all cases, but it's in a lot of cases. Um, Furthermore, I think a mortgage broker, and obviously like Dan over here, the reason why I have him on the show is because he works with 30 banks, and he's the guy that can run all the numbers and make sure that you're getting the best deal. Um, So, And, of course, all the best mortgage brokers are available nights and weekends. They can get a letter over to you in a blast. You're not going to miss out on that offer. So um, 
you know, definitely something to keep it in consideration. And mistake number one, the biggest one, investing without professional education. Okay, so what does that mean? The biggest mistake many buyers are found guilty of is buying a home without professional education. You know, many buyers don't realize that they can hire uh, an agent to represent them, to negotiate on their behalf, and to educate them through the process at no charge. Now, there's some agents that do charge for that, um, but there's also most agents that don't. So you can hire somebody. If you have questions on that or any of this stuff, give me a shout, 401 401- Three five nine two three three eight, and lastly, you don't need, um, you know, this is part of the number one. You don't need a buyer's agent, you know, to walk you through the process. You can go right to the listing agent, but just make sure that that listing agent, um, you know, lets you know a little bit about agency and uh, agency law and the difference between them representing you to um, just facilitating the transaction. But either way, they should guide you through the steps, let you know you know, what's coming up next, what you need to do, how to get it done. So um, that was the countdown of the top seven ways buyers lose right here on uh, the Roundtable Real Estate Simplified. You can check it out on theroundtableradio.com. 